Hey, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm going to replace the spark plugs on this uh, 2016 Subaru. This is a four cylinder. I forget, uh, I know it's called the boxer engine, but I forget the specs of the engine. I'll try to figure them out and post them down below. But uh, spark plugs are supposedly pretty difficult to change. I'm going to try to do it without removing the battery. Uh, you should disconnect the battery. Um, and I'm going to try to remove it without removing the uh, air handler hose but that should be easy to come off and actually I was thinking of maybe trying to clean out the air uh, intake manifold so I may or uh, sorry I'm having a senior moment um, the throttle body uh, may clean the throttle body out and uh, to do that I'll have to remove this hose and the uh, down here to the uh, air filter box this is the air intake uh, area and then the air goes through here and then into the throttle body this probably needs to be clean it's 80,000 miles so it's time for the spark plugs to be changed definitely and uh, um, you know that could be cleaned out too as well anyway first thing to do is on this side I'm going to remove these uh, 10, mil 10 millimeter bolts down here that are holding on the uh, quill packs to each. I did get uh, one bolt off down here, but I can't get this one off because I, my wrench just won't fit in there. Um, and uh, it says to use a quarter inch extension, what I'm reading. So uh, I don't have that. I'm probably gonna have to go get it, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this, uh, at least this air box cover off. So um, that's gonna require disconnecting this. Uh, we'll disconnect this. Just need to lift that up and unplug it and then uh, pop these hinges and uh, this whole piece will come out and then I can uh, show you about that bolt. This is eight millimeter. The issue here is that a bigger wrench can't get the 10 millimeter socket uh, wrench to even ratchet in there and even on a smaller wrench you can't do it. You need a small extension. I'm going to play around with this just a little bit to see if I can get it to work. So using the smaller wrench, I was able to get it to work. So it, it moves uh, a lot better in there than the bigger wrench. The bigger wrench wouldn't fit. It's always good to have a magnet so you can grab bolts and things that are in places without dropping them I may have to use two hands but thank you to Fidelity National Title for the magnet so these are those two 10 millimeter bolts holding in the coil packs now I'm going to pull the coil packs out coil packs uh, came out of the way pretty easily so now we're gonna get the spark plugs out that's gonna take a little trickery okay some time has passed I had to go somewhere and um, I wanted to pick up the I wanted to pick up the sockets for the um, spark plugs. These are the kind of spark plugs that I got. Part number. And uh, there you go. I checked the gaps with this uh, tool and the gaps are right on. I'll put that information about the uh, gaps in the comment section. All right, let me show you the spark plug. Spark plug, NGK, and uh, let's see which one of these fits the best. I think 14 millimeter probably. Yeah, the 14 millimeter fits perfectly. So I'm going to use that, and uh, let's try to get the other plugs out first. Okay, so the first thing I'll show you. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that into the hole where the spark plug is. And then I'm going to put the uh, ratchet on that. Try to get it out. Ended up using a little bit longer ratchet because I was able to fit it in there. I had it spinning by hand, but I may have to do a few more ratchet turns. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this hose off too since I'm gonna take the throttle body out. This one isn't gonna go in, it's easy, but there we go. All right, let's get the ratchet on it. Now, 
That's not gonna be helpful. Hang on. Took uh, two hands to break it free, but it's coming easy now. So here's the spark plug with uh, about 80,000 miles on it. Here's number two. They really aren't that bad comparing them to the existing ones. Pretty good comparison here. Let's see if that's a good comparison. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the new ones in uh, same way. Took the old ones out. I'm gonna just start this by hand um, and then we'll ratchet it down. Wiggling to get it down in there. I'm gonna be very careful to not cross thread anything. Everything's going on very smooth. I'm gonna get the ratchet in there now. Second one going in. This, this one's a lot easier. So, I don't see how I'm going to do the other side without taking the battery tray out. I'm probably going to consider doing that. And this is going on hand tight. Get the ratchet on there. And uh, very hard for me to get my torque wrench in there, but I've got a smaller torque wrench I'm going to get right now. These would be torqued down to 13.3 foot-pounds. There's crush washers on them that you just need to make sure you crush. 13.3 foot-pounds is not very tight, so you don't have to tighten it very hard at all. I put a little dielectric grease on the uh, opening at the bottom of the coil pack. And then I'm just going to put the coil pack back in place over the plug, and then we'll reinsert the bolt. Get the second coil, coil pack done now. All right, start spinning it. Hard to tell if we got it in. Oh, here we go. Right. I'm just spinning the socket on top of the bolt for the coil pack, and then I'll put the wrench on it. I think the torque setting is something like five foot pounds for these coil pack bolts. I don't have any way to get a torque wrench in there, um, especially because I'm using the smaller size wrench, quarter inch wrench, I think. So um, that's a lot less than even the spark plug. So in other words, you don't have to crank down on it very tight. That's tight enough. Okay, the question is, can I do it without removing this battery tray, especially this battery tray wall? Here's the battery tray, and there's a wall here. Um, I think I can do it, so I'm going to try. I'm going to get the quill packs off first. I don't know how this is going to go. I got it out. Very difficult just to get the quill pack bolt on. So now, I get the quill pack out. Alright, now that's out, but not all the way. I'm going to have to use two hands. Had to do some twisting, but I got it. It's right here. Pulled it out from right there. So, uh, let me get the other quill pack off, and then we'll see about the spark plugs. Okay, I got that quill pack off. I actually had to go under the car and push. Um, you can reach it pretty easily from under the car. In fact, it may be the way I extract the... I extract the... Uh, spark plug i don't know on that back one that rear driver side is the tough one and it doesn't matter if you have this battery box out or not there is not enough room back there just right in here to get anything out i've heard of people jacking up the engine loosening loosening the 
engine mounts and jacking it up to get to it. And that's the way to do it, I guess, apparently. All right, work on the spark plugs next. I did a lot of this from underneath. And then if you pull the wrench up towards the top over that bar, the frame, uh, you can get it on and off the extension. It's starting to get it's starting to get pretty loose. I'm gonna uh, try to pop it out. I'm gonna pop the ratchet out and just try to do it by hand. Man, it is just too tight by hand. I can get the wrench out just barely, and then it's too tight by hand. I'm gonna try to use pliers. All right, I finally got this uh, rear driver side spark plug out, and I used a big combination of things. Uh, this joint on top of a, a little adapter. So I think that's quarter to one half, uh, one half to quarter, one quarter, one quarter. Um, just to be able to find the right angles and the right lengths to, to get up in there. A combination of laying underneath and uh, trying from the top. So. Um, that's the spark plug. Let's go ahead and replace it now. And torquing this down, don't know that's going to happen. We're just going to have to eyeball it. Do it by feel. I was able to start threading this in from underneath. Turning it with my hand. I can still kind of turn it with my hand, but I'm going to try to get the ratchet on it now. I don't know if I have enough room, but maybe almost. I used a combination of hand tightening then the vice grips to uh, get it in far enough so that I can put the ratchet on and then we're going to go as tight as we can with the ratchet until we think the washers are crushed then we'll get off what I hope is the easier of the two driver's side spark plugs which is the front driver's side get a little video of what I'm doing. So I take the socket and I drop it into the bottom of the engine bay. See? Very simple. Take the socket and I'm going to insert it into the hole where the spark plug is. See? Like that. Let's see if I can insert this into the place where the spark plug is. All right, here we go. All right, next, I'm gonna take the extension and we'll get it in there. And I may, whoops, I dropped it. I may go from the bottom and try to get the extension in. Here we are up under the car, the driver's side tire. And right up here, uh, is the uh, I don't think you can see it but that's the uh, engine where the spark plugs are so we're gonna try to get this extension in there not really sure how I did it but reached up under there and I got the extension in place so now we're gonna hook the ratchet up to it and start to loosen it right there Getting pretty loose, but it's a long thread, so it's gonna take a while. Kind of hard to show this on film, but when this is in the engine and I want to get that off, the uh, extension off of the, the uh, socket, I just take the screwdriver, stick it in there, and pull while I push. Very difficult. Sometimes I have to do it with one hand. I'm now gonna hook up this contraption and try to get this driver's side the rest of the way off, but it should be easy compared to the rear driver's side. All right, here it is with those various extensions on them. I really am just finishing, loosening up the spark plug pretty much by hand. And then the magnet in the, there's a magnet in the, uh, socket and that's gonna help me pull it out let's see there we go all right do it by hand 
All right, it's getting dark. My hands are killing me. Here's the last spark plug. Driver's side front, it's out. We go ahead and put the new spark plug in, turn it by hand, do the opposite of what we just did with the same tools in the opposite order. Okay, worked my way through the two different levels, hand tightening until I could get the ratchet on it. And now the spark plug's going in. Um, I don't know exactly how much longer this driver's side has taken, but if I'd taken the battery out, it probably would have been the same amount of time. And I'm, again, not sure that that really would have helped a ton, but this side is definitely taking maybe three, four, five times longer. But it's probably the only time I'm ever going to have to do it. Yeah, that's how it goes. So, this job would be much more difficult if it weren't for this magnet. And I'm constantly picking up tools that I drop and uh, bolts that I drop. So, gotta have a magnet. Magnet. So I don't know. You can see it. Let me get the light here. All right. There's the extension right there. And it won't, won't come out. Let's see. You can see it, it won't come out. It's hitting the battery box. Or the frame. I mean, it, the battery box could be out. It's still going to hit the frame. Maybe you could lift it over. But what I have to do is get the extension off of the socket and that's what I use that screwdriver for so I'm going to reach the screwdriver in there pop it off pull the extension out then I can pull the socket out I, I just stick my pinky in there and kind of grab it okay we're all set with the coil packs so now let's clean off the uh, throttle body I'm going to take it out uh, we've got four bolts I believe they're 10 millimeter Let's get those off um, you can see right here on the throttle body I've rubbed a couple places and you can see how black it was so it's dirty um, not gonna really be able to clean much up in there but I'm gonna clean this out uh, that side looks pretty clean so I'm really just cleaning this side I'm going to um, also spray a little while I uh, push it in the open position try not to pinch myself I've got uh, throttle body and air intake cleaner. So let's go ahead and spray it a little bit. All right, it's not perfect, but it's about 99% better, let's say. So put it back in place, put the four bolts back on it, one, two, three, four, and then we'll hook up the uh, air intake and be ready to go. Torx specs are six foot pounds for these, so not it's not very tight. All right, put the air filter back in right here and stuck this box back on so the air filters are straight there. Connected this sensor up. We'll tighten this connection and then uh, tighten this one. 
I think there's a bolt missing here. I'm not sure, but I think the bolt goes through that. So, uh, I think a bolt's missing here, so I'm gonna check on that, but I'm gonna tighten up this, tighten up this, then I think I'm ready to fire it up. It had been idling quite low. I think that has fixed our problem with the idle and uh, seems like it's running better. I, uh, I'm going to monitor the gas mileage to see if that helps improve it, but um, definitely it was time to do the plugs and clean the throttle line. Thanks for watching.